Hello and welcome to Link Ahead, the City of Dublin podcast. I'm Lindsay Weisenauer, the Director of Communications and Public Information for the City of Dublin. And I'm Bruce Edwards, Digital Brand Manager for the City. Well, schools here in Dublin are back in session. Students are learning, educators are teaching, and parents are relieved. <laughs> okay, well, we know plenty of parents miss their kids, too, after having them around the house. Are summer. you going to miss your kids? Yeah, absolutely going to miss my kids. <laughs> well, we know it can be an anxiety-filled time also with school safety top of mind. So we asked Dublin's Chief of Police, Justin Pice, to join us today to talk about that and other safety initiatives. Chief, welcome to Link Ahead. Thank you very much for having me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's a it's a heavy topic, but unfortunately, school safety is something that parents, educators, community leaders, and of course, the police are thinking about right now. As students head back to school this month, what should the public be confident in? Yeah, I would want them to know that this conversation is something we're aware of, certainly as a police department, and it's not just as we enter this school year. This is something that we have stayed focused on for Um, The entire time I have been here, and frankly, the entire time the police department has existed in this community, uh, we're very fortunate that we have great support for the police department, and we really got great members of the police department who are focused on safety throughout the community. But we would be remiss if we weren't talking about how people have concerns about and anxieties about returning back to school with things they have seen in the uh, media uh, in the last several months. And so, um, you know, what I would want them to know is that it is an intentional focus on our part. And I've shared this in public so many times, but it always is important to repeat it and emphasize it, that our mission is protection, service, and public safety in partnership with the community. And that's our mission, but our goals that underline that mission and help us achieve that and deliver that are intentional as we work through each and every day and and each month uh, through the calendar and then every year. And our focus there intentionally is to make sure that we are prepared for those critical incidents that we hope never occur in our community, but we have to train as if they're imminent and be ready to answer the call for the community. And that certainly is a focus on uh, areas where we know people have anxiety and we know people um, want to be safe, want to feel safe. And so it's our absolute mission to deliver that, but to also communicate the things that we're doing. Chief, after 21 people were killed in Uvalde, Texas, at Robb Elementary School, you gathered with city officials and school leaders to discuss Dublin safety and security at schools. What was discussed and what did you learn? That was an intentional opportunity for us to come together, again, directly in response to things we were hearing from community members, conversations with school administration, and then conversations internally in the police department. Uh, And then we're very fortunate with the Chief's Advisory Committee that we have a group of committed partners uh, and stakeholders in the community who were also gathering things that they had heard to bring to the table as part of our monthly discussions. Um, And so that was an opportunity for us to bring together partners in the community in an intentional conversation about safety as it relates to the school system in a way that we really haven't gathered before. And so we reached out to um, Dr. Marshausen at the school to make sure that the school certainly was a a partner on board. The CPI staff uh, here in the city, we wanted to make sure was part of an intentional conversation. The fire department, Columbus Police Department, and then the Union County Sheriff's Office were also integral partners because they have some stake in the schools that extend beyond the city limits. And so the intention was to come together to talk about everything we have done historically to prepare uh, for uh, making sure that the schools are a safe environment. Certainly that includes a long history with our school resource officer program uh, and intentional training and drills that we have done in partnership with the school. But we wanted to talk about it from a perspective of crisis communications. And so uh, uh, City Manager Dana McDaniel has always said he's got uh, the utmost confidence in our ability to respond. We have excellent officers, uh, communications technicians who have great training and experience, and he has absolute faith in us addressing the incident itself. But if we look and reflect on what the community in Uvalde is dealing with in the aftermath of an absolute tragic and horrific event, we know that leading the community through the aftermath of such a tragic situation is going to require a group effort of a scale we have and hope to never experience in our community. We don't want to wait until something happens before we bring all those partners together and have an intentional conversation about all of our roles and partnership in communicating, leading, and helping a community heal in the aftermath of a tragedy. And so what we learned really was um, how many partners we have that are so devoted and dedicated uh, to making sure that this community is taken care of, 
that we are preventing everything we possibly can, but are also ready to come together and share that responsibility to help heal a community should anything happen. You mentioned all the partners that we have, and uh, beyond that, what strengths do we have in place throughout the Dublin City School System? Yeah, I mentioned uh, just briefly there, but it's important to go back and highlight uh, that our school resource officer program, we are so wonderfully blessed to have support from the community and from the school system and a long-term investment in, in that program. And so our school resource officers, we have seven school resource officers out of the 74 sworn officers that we have in the police department, which is a, a substantial um, a, amount of resource to devote and intentionally devote to the school. So we have that connectivity, so we have that partnership, uh, and that has been over two decades here in the community. So we're very fortunate to have that history um, and partnership with the school system. And, and the school does a fantastic job of working with the SROs, not just to be present, but to be involved and to work in partnership on safety training and drilling uh, in the schools to make sure that students and faculty are prepared uh, for the situations where there is an emergency and know exactly what to do. And parents can be confident when they send their kids to school that we're working in partnership so that students and teachers uh, and administrators in the school system can focus on what's important to them, which is making sure that education is the focus because safety is already addressed. Now, this November, there will be a school incident drill. What should families expect from that? Yeah, the school incident drill is part of the planned uh, activities for the school uh, this year uh, with the teachers and with our school resource officers. So it will be done during a day where the students won't be in session, but it is an opportunity for us to partner and have those conversations. So I know there may be some anxiety for parents on what their students are going to experience if they hear that and hear that we're going to be drilling um, or training. And, and it really is intentionally to have conversation with the teachers, with the administrators, and have our school resource officers be part of that conversation to talk about safety and preparation. You know, after any school tragedy, one of the things you hear in the media or the public is the idea of arming teachers. Have you had any conversations with the school system about teachers being trained and armed? Yeah, very fortunate to have a good relationship, certainly, with the school system for a long time. And, and they're such wonderful partners here in the community. And Dr. Marshausen and I have had some intentional conversation as things have shifted uh, in possibilities for school systems. But we are on the same page. And I, I love how Dr. Marshausen addresses it um, with intentional focus on we have such great safety resources here in the community um, between uh, our, again, communications technicians, certainly our police officers, our firefighters, and our emergency medical personnel, um, that we can be responsive to any incident very quickly with a lot of resources. We have great partners that are just outside of the community in Columbus and in Union County who are part of that training earlier this year as well. And so there are a lot of resources that will be coming to address the situation if something were to occur. And that gives both the city, the community, and, the, um, and certainly the school system the confidence that we're going to be able to respond and address the situation if something were to happen. And so from that perspective, our perspective from the school and from the police department is we don't feel the need to arm teachers. We have the right resources in place. Um, again, as we brought together all of those resources as part of an exercise in training and crisis communication, it was also sharing perspective on expectations and so and what the roles will be for all of the entities involved. And so we will focus on that public safety response from a fire, police, emergency communications perspective. What we want the schools to focus on or what they focus on so well, which is to take care of the children. And so having that conversation, it's less about needing to progress or add anything that we don't already have and talking more about partnering with the pieces we already have in place to keep the school environment safe. Chief, let's broaden out and talk about Dublin holistically in your career, too, because next year you'll celebrate 20 years serving as a member of the force. Congratulations on that. How has the city changed over those years? And with it, you know, how has it changed with neighborhood safety and safety at events? Yeah, it's uh, 20 years. That's, it all <laughs> makes me sound old because I am. <laughs> so I have to lean into it. All those, my wife says, it's me aging into my personality at oh, some man. level as well, uh, which I think is a compliment. I, know, uh, I, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always act like I, an old man. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll choose to believe it's a compliment. But no, no, I've been so blessed to be here for uh, almost two decades now. And um, my wife and I came here with our two oldest at the time. We have um, five who have gone through Dublin City Schools. And so we've been here uh, a long time watching the community grow and evolve uh, into what we see today. And so the things that have changed certainly um, have 
always been an intentional focus for us at the police department because as a community evolves, a police department has to evolve. And so we are focused on new developments and how we best protect and serve those areas of the community. And so Bridge Park's a great example of something that didn't exist at the beginning of my career and is such an integral part of our community now in a way that gives us the opportunity to consider how are we going to provide service there, how are we going to make sure everyone is safe, and how are we going to engage with the residents and businesses and visitors in a way that makes them feel safe in our community and welcome in our community. And so I, if I look back on you know my time here and certainly to the future as I continue to get to serve here in this wonderful community, what I love is that we have such great support and we have such a fundamental opportunity to continue to deliver on public trust and confidence in a way uh, and earn that public traffic, trust and confidence in a way that is still pointed at the same things that were important when I started here. Again, that protection service and public safety and partnership. We just to get to do it in new ways and stretch ourselves in new ways from a police perspective that gets to deliver exactly what this community expects and deserves when they're here in the city of Dublin. Chief, as Bruce mentioned, you have worked your way up to being chief. So along the way, what job was most interesting to you and, and why? I would say I, I loved every job I was in while I was there. And so I just getting the chance as an officer to learn this community and to meet people as I started here. I I worked in another agency for about three years before I came here. Um, And uh, we don't really have any family in this area. Uh, I I knew a couple of people at the police department, which is how I ended up here. Um, But getting a chance to engage with the community at an intimate level as a police officer gets to do and experience in a way that's unique to our perspective in responding to um, providing uh, assistance and to responding to calls that uh, the public ask us to come and resolve. Um, it w- was important and, and uh, so wonderful to get to meet so many people. And then as I progressed through my career, uh, particularly as a supervisor, getting to uh, work in different capacities in the organization, I, I was just so blessed to be able to do some really unique things along the course of my career. And that helped build the foundation for me as a chief to have experienced the organization and the community in a way uh, that I just am so uh, grateful for. That now as chief, being able to um, work with the wonderful people at the police department, we have such wonderfully experienced and trained and talented members of our agency Uh, and to get to uh, work with them on where our agency is going and work with the community and the Chief's Advisory Committee and making sure that we understand the expectations of protection and service that they want to be part of in their police department. Um, Every stop along the way has been wonderful, but I love what I get to do now. We're fortunate in Dublin to live and work in a safe city, but as you know, in this age of social media, instant information and basically everyone having a video recorder in their hands One incident can spiral into both a human crisis and a PR crisis for police departments. How do you talk about, prepare for, and handle that spotlight, that instant scrutiny that comes with your job? You know, that's a really interesting question because it feels like the attention is heightened in a way that it never has been. I think I always felt that it's a responsibility to lean into an understanding that you're here to serve the public. And so you have to meet that expectation and know that people are going to want to um, be engaged with that service, and they're also want to know, going to want to know in today's day and age why things were done and how we could do things better in the future. And so I choose to see the positive intention behind that, which is we all want a safe community. We all want to uh, have confidence and trust and faith in our public servants. And uh, in Dublin, we have a, a good uh, history of delivering on that. And so uh, wh- while the question is about social media, it really is about um, community confidence And so um, I think the best way you can prepare for that is to be intentional about how you deliver service day in and day out, to be engaged with your community. And it's certainly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention as part of this conversation, we have a wonderful staff at CPI um, and certainly a a fantastic uh, public information officer in Rebecca Myers um, who are partners along the way. And so having that intentional conversation um, with your team about how we share what we do with the public so that they are informed and we provide opportunities to engage. And then the progression and connection with the Chief's Advisory Committee really has been absolutely wonderful because it's not just us independently determining how we're going to protect and serve the community. We're doing so in partnership with a group of stakeholders who are helping us see perspectives that we might have missed otherwise 
if we were just looking at it from our lens at the police department. And so I think the best way to prepare, again, is to just be intentional, to be engaged, and to be mindful that the things that we are doing today are wonderful, but we always have to consider what more can we be doing to serve the public in the future. Your father was a police officer. When did you know that you wanted to be one? I don't think I can remember a time where I didn't expect I would be a police officer. So from a very young age, getting to watch my um, father work as a police officer in a small town where he was one of 12 police officers. It was a small wow. town, um, oh, hard God. to escape the public spotlight uh, as, as a child of a police officer in a small <laughs> town. Um, so I always had a lot of people looking out for me as how I'll reflect <laughs> on it. Suppose, fondly. Uh, uh, um, but I, you know, it wasn't just that my dad was a police officer. As a testament to who he is as, as a person, as a father, um, and as a community member, he was a police officer in the town he grew up in. And so it was not just about what he did in the X's and O's of policing. It was how he served the community, how he got to take care of a community. And so for me, while I knew it was going to be a path towards policing, it really was about public service. It really was about being in a position to give back to a community for all the blessings that we receive as part of a community and to take care of people. And so um, for me, I, I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and we share that same lesson uh, with uh, our children. My wife, Abby, is a NICU nurse manager at Riverside Hospital. And I don't expect that uh, our children will necessarily follow in exactly our career paths. But what we talk, to them, to talk with them about is the intentionality of the gifts that they have um, are best honored in the service of others. And so wherever it is they decide to make their path, we just encourage them, consider what you can do with the wonderful blessings you have in service to others wherever you decide to make your career and make your home in the future, um, because that will open the world to you to so many possibilities in a meaningful career of service. So you have five kids and bring your kids to work day. What is that like for you? <laughs> yeah, if I, it, they are not interested in coming with me <laughs> because as, uh, as they have found in their experience, I'm never really not at work. Um, so because when you live in a community, you're always paying attention to, well, what are the things that we need to be doing from our perspective as a city service to be able to deliver again on the expectations that community has? Um, but bringing them into an understanding of what we get to do here at the police department has been fun along the way. I will tell you one of my fondest recollections was a few moments before I was sworn in as chief. I got a chance to collect and gather um, our five kids and my wife in the chief's office um, before I took the oath and just to talk with them about how proud I was of them because there's no way I arrive in this place without the support of my wife and my kids. Uh, and so what I shared with them was just that moment of reflection that in some ways we were all the chief because they are what gives me the strength and confidence to come and do what I do each and every day for this community, but also for them. And, uh, and also to remind them that Living in the public arena, it can be difficult, sure. but it's also a reflection that we live in a wonderful community. And so when people see them, while they see them in a new light because they're aware of what I do, um, it's also with the support of that community that they are seeing them as well. And so it really was a, a profound moment for me. Oh, and we should mention you are always recruiting the next generation of officers. So give us your elevator speech. Why is law enforcement a good career and why join Dublin Police? I believe people fundamentally go to work to be part of something bigger than themselves. It is part of being a community. Uh, it is part of contributing to something and, and doing something meaningful and uh in policing, what we get to do matters, and it matters in a way that is very real and tangible, not just in this community, but in any community where, uh, in this profession, we're so blessed to serve the public and to take care of people and to be there in where we get to deliver, um, hopefully, a, a little bit of sense of safety again to, uh, to bring their uh, concerns to a place where we get to resolve issues or at least provide them the support uh, that they need in that moment. And so for me, the elevator pitch is if you want to do something, anyone who wants to lead wants to lead when it matters. And anyone who wants to serve wants to serve where it matters. And serving as a police officer uh, always matters. Well done. And uh, anyone interested can find more information at yourdublinpolice.org. Well, we'd like to wrap up our conversations with a rapid round of questions. Are you ready, Chief? I'm, I am ready. <laughs> All right. I think I'm ready. <laughs> Favorite spot in Dublin for you and your family? 
there are so many, so many points that are uh, just anchors for us here in the community. Um, whether it's it, you know St. Bridget certainly has a, a, a great place in our heart. Um, Bridge Park is it is new and exciting. I will tell you in reflection, Avery Park was uh, really a wonderful place for us for so many years. Whether it was softball or baseball or soccer. Um, there was just a lot of weekends that we got a chance to spend there, not just uh, with our kids involved in the activities, but with so many community members who are also um, with their children there. And so that's always, you know, every time I drive by there, I reflect fondly on, on the time we spent there. Okay, what's the most common complaint you hear out in the community? I would say that for us, it's uh, what we hear most is traffic. Um, that is, you know, we have a lot of roadway that runs to and from and through the city of Dublin. And so anyone who is either stuck in traffic <laughs> or, um, you know, trying to get somewhere uh, they would like to get quicker um, or seeing and observing outside of traffic, the things that are behaviors they would rather not um, be seeing on the roadway are things that we hear probably most frequently. Favorite Dublin event and why? Oh, gosh, there's so many uh, wonderful events, and certainly we're here at the end of our event season. I- I'm going to say the Dublin Irish Festival, um, and, you know, the reason is it's right here on our uh, front lawn, and mm-hmm. it is uh, it was wonderful to have it all together in one space again. There are people I only see once a year um, because they come uh, to the festival, from even from other communities who I get to see and spend time with, and it really is the gathering of our city staff and certainly our police department being there uh, to make sure everyone is safe, but all of the staff that come together to put that event on, uh, it's, it's a way for us to all be together in one space and then have the community. And so where on else on earth do you get to throw a party uh, that's as, uh, <laughs> that is as wonderful as the Dublin Irish Festival? Uh, what Dublin police initiative are you most proud of? The thing I'm most proud of in our recent progression from the department is the partnership with the Chief's Advisory Committee. It really has been a wonderful experience, again, to have that perspective intentionally gathered monthly to talk about our um, police policies and procedures and practices to make sure that we're not engaged just in past practice, but that we're looking towards the best practices and that that is informed by community expectation. And so having that voice and partnership with the Chiefs Advisory Committee has really been wonderful. Favorite police show or movie of all time? Oh, I love uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, that, so <laughs> that, you know, uh, just uh, Axel Foley um, certainly was, you know, you know part of my um, experience in, in youth in seeing it through that lens. So that's what, that's my favorite. <laughs> Okay, tell us something about yourself that might surprise our listeners. Most people don't know um, that I sang uh, for a number of years with the Dublin Singers here, and I sang with the St. Bridget Choir for uh, for years as well. I don't have as much time as I would like to to be able to go back and do that, but I, I think most people would be surprised by that, other than the choir and, and the Dublin Singers group. I was hoping you were going to say that. Chief, we are auditioning for singers for the Link Ahead official songs. <laughs> so. Is there going to be? Is, is yes. there a band yet? Right. No, no, no. It would okay. just be all all your voice. <laughs> oh, so, okay, all right. We'll stick around after I'll, the show. I'll start working we'll, on we'll jingles. Work on Please right. do. <laughs> all right, Chief. Finish this sentence. Dublin is a great place to serve because. It's a wonderful community to be part of. And so when you serve a community, you can't serve and then uh, be anything more than immersed in the community that you that you get to serve. Hey. Chief Justin Pice, thank you for joining us on Link Ahead. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity today, and I really appreciate getting to share some thoughts as part of the podcast. And to our listeners, thank you for taking the time to connect with your city. Tune in next time as we continue to explore the many personalities and experiences that make Dublin a thriving and safe place to live, work, and grow.